Oesters, diesters, triesters, and everything in it is food grade or pharmaceutical grade. Um, the factory uses ISO 22000, which is a food safety management system. So all their materials are traced, tracked, um, known to be safe. And everything in it meets FDA requirements for food contact or food ingredients. And it has no animal byproducts. Here's just a little video to show you a little bit about the, um, the wax and its properties and how it compares beeswax. White is better comb wax, the yellow is beeswax. All right, so there's just a brief little intro so you can see the properties. Um, here are some physical properties of the melting point is just ever so slightly above that of beeswax on average. The cell size is 5.3 to 5.4 millimeters and the comb thickness 24 and a half millimeters. Cell wall thickness 0.15 to 0.2 millimeters and wall inclination seven degrees. And the comb weighs around 0.2 grams per square centimeter. So I want to share this video. This shows a little bit about how the comb is manufactured. Um, it's an advertising video that Hexacells put together, but it really shows off their production line. Um, it does not show the actual mechanism that makes the comb. That part's a secret, but the um, the robotic line that handles the combs is very impressive, so I thought I'd share this. The life of bees had many secrets. Generations of beekeepers passed on knowledge to understand them. The changes are already expected. Traditions and innovation can bring promising progression. the same purpose. Technology for a successful future. All right. And I can tell you, um, I've been to the factory and None of those machines are um, animations. Those are all the actual robots they use. Um, it's, a, it's a very impressive setup they have. Um, all right, so why, why would you want to use artificial comb when the bees are perfectly capable of making their own comb? Um, so better comb can be used any time where you would prefer to have fully drawn comb, but you don't have any. Um, if you're installing a package or a nuke, it's beneficial to have drawn combs so that the bees don't need to build that comb. They have a place to store nectar, place to lay eggs right away. 
uh, if you're hiving a swarm, especially late in the season, um, having drawn combs is very beneficial and late in the season, it can be the difference between a swarm surviving and not surviving. If you have a hive that is in need of space and is growing rapidly, has a lot of brood hatching out soon, um, you can add a whole brood chamber or, or super of better comb and they instantly have space that's ready to use. Same goes for a strong honey flow. You notice a, a strong honey flow coming in. You can put a super of better comb frames on and they instantly have the space to put the, to put the nectar. And I've seen them do that. They'll, they'll fill frames within hours of you putting the frames on the hive, they'll start putting nectar in. So those last two points are an important part of uh, swarm prevention, having plenty of extra space for the bees. So in addition to all the normal benefits of having drawn frames around, there are benefits over naturally drawn frames. And those are better comb will not have any foul brood spores in it. They can be built on demand. And you don't need to wait for the bees to make them. And there's no residual miticide or pesticides in the wax. And we know there's, there's quite a bit of research that shows there's a bunch of that in wax. So here's just a, a little taste of it. The first graph on the left shows the, um, on the x-axis, there's the number of pesticides found in a sample of wax. Now the y-axis is the percentage of samples that, um, that had that number of pesticides found. And as you can see here, some, some waxes had as many as eight pesticides found in them. Mo many had zero, one, or two pesticides found in them. So it's very, very common. Um, over on the right here, this shows which pesticides or insecticides were found. Um, and these first two are cumafos and fluvalinate. They're, they're beekeeper applied chemicals. So the, the most common culprits, beekeepers, miticides, agricultural pesticides, and fungicides. So better comb gives you a clean starting point without, without any of those. So now I'll just get into some pictures of, of comb here. This is a picture I took one of my first tests with a comb. Um, and you can see the eggs right, right around here. Um, you can see the bees do work the cells. They add wax to them. Um, and they turn yellow over time, just like natural comb does. Here's a little bit of capped brood. Here's another photo of a frame it has eggs in it. There's the queen right there. You can see this frame is still mostly white. It doesn't have much yellow on it yet. You can see they've, they've already built the ring of honey around the outside here. Here's a nice frame of brood. This is not my photo, so I don't know how old that is. Here's another frame of brood, pretty decent brood pattern with honey stored on the outside. And they do add depth to it. For honey, they often draw it out further and um, cap off the honey. And then they'll chew it back down if they need to put brood in it. So here's a brood frame where much of the brood is already hatched out. And you can see from the dark appearance here, you can't tell that this is better comb anymore. It looks just like any other comb does. So in addition to just regular beekeeping, there are some unique uses of, of better comb. And here is one example. Um, Natalie Steinhauer and Zach Lamas at the University of Maryland were trying to determine what was affecting queens in California. There's some unknown pathogen affecting them. And they developed a way to raise queens inside a lab so they could do experiments much more quickly and efficiently. And they needed something that was sure to not have any miticides or pesticides or pathogens um, to raise the bees on. So they use little three by three squares of better comb in cups inside an incubator. And um, it was very, very helpful for their experiment. 
And we feel that there are probably other uses like this that will emerge as more people learn about better foam. Okay, so I'd like to show everyone how to uh, how to actually install better comb into a frame now. We don't sell it pre-installed because it's quite fragile to ship, um, but it isn't difficult to, to do that. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen for a second, and switch to the video. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to install a medium better comb into a frame. So what I've got here is a frame, just a regular wooden frame with a groove top bar. Um, it's labeled better comb, which is important because once you use these for a while, you can't tell which ones are better comb anymore. So it's, it's very important to label them. Um, it has a wire, I don't know if you can see it, but there's, there's one loop of wire here in this medium and instead of anchoring the wire on one nail, it's anchored on two nails. And that's important because we're going to put 12 volts through this wire to heat it up and embed it into the comb. It's a little different from how many people embed uh, wax foundation where they apply power to both sides of the frame. We're gonna apply power to just one side of the frame and um, heat up that wire. So then I take this comb and I need to find which way the cells slope. So you can see the cells are sloping uphill towards the outside. So I'm going to have that be facing away from me. And then I have this device here. I'll show you a little up close here. It's just a simple device with two electrical terminals on it. And those are connected to a regular car battery. A lawnmower battery works too. It does not need to be a huge battery. Um, so we have these two terminals. They're a little squishy and that helps us make contact with the frame. All right, let me see what's going on. There we go. All right, so now I'm going to set my frame down over the comb and push it down until the wires are resting on the comb. Sometimes it's a tighter fit than other times, it just depends on the exact size of the frame and the exact size of the comb. Um, and then don't wanna put your hands on the ends because the wire will get very hot and hold it from here. And then I'm, I'm resting it on a shim here so that I have room to push the frame down over the comb. Now I line it up to the electrical contacts. And as soon as I touch it to those contacts, that wire will get hot and it will melt down into the comb. And I pull it away. There's a little bit of smoke from the wire getting hot. Let it cool for a second or two. And then I'm done. So now we have comb embedded in a frame and it's it's all ready to use. There is an optional step and that is adding toothpicks to the top and bottom bar. That helps keep the comb centered because it is a little bit flexible from the, the bend in the wire. Um, but it's not absolutely necessary. I don't do it with mine. So there's a medium. Here's a deep right here. The deep, we wire with four wires. So it goes in one end, back forth, back forth, and back to here. And then we adjust our embedding device a little bit wider so that it, it'll touch those two contacts. And um, better comb frames can be extracted or used for brood. So you can, you can use a honey super uh, full of these. You can do brood chambers full of these. Um, it is important to wire them though. We found that 
just pressing the comb into a frame isn't enough, especially in warm climates or with honey. The, uh, the comb tends to sag down. So the wires are important to uh, give it the physical strength to, to hold up. All right, come back here, share my screen again. All right, so for us, um, future directions for better comb, it's being widely adopted. We, we thought perhaps that people would use this for starting packages or expanding nukes, um, but maybe not for everything. And we find a lot of people are using it for everything. We have some beekeepers who are using it exclusively even for pretty large operations. So um, we're interested to see where that goes. Uh, there's great interest um, all across the US and in Canada as well. So we've expanded sales into Canada and Hexa Cells is selling it in the rest of the world. So we are planning more research ourselves here and we actually better be just hired a new director of research and education and he will be conducting some experiments to find out what else we can do with better comb, what else it might be used for. Um, for example, does having all worker cells lead to fewer drones? Does that help control Varroa? That's just one, one question that we might try to answer among a bunch of others. And that is it for my prepared slides, but I'm hoping that you guys have a lot of questions and um, if you want me to demonstrate something else or uh, anything at all, I'd, I'd be happy to, to answer your questions. Well, John, we had one question about the installation device there that uh, you attach the battery. Is it available from Better Bee? Yes, yep. Uh, we sell this. Um, it's really pretty simple if you want to build one yourself, but we sell it. Um, it's called the Better Comb and Better Embedding Device. And it also comes in the kit. We sell a Better Comb kit, which is a fully unassembled kit. And this is part of that. People uh, can unmute yourselves and, and ask that David questions uh, if you'd like, or if you'd rather, uh, you can type them in the chat and either Philip or myself can ask David. Uh, Thomas has a question for David. How much, uh, what is the cost? Um, do you sell okay. it in lots of five or 10 or 100? We sell the combs in boxes of 10. So I actually can show you. Here's a box that medium comes in. Uh, the mediums are, I believe, $45 per box and the deeps are $55 per box. We also sell pre-wired frames, pre-assembled and pre-wired frames, so you don't have to build them. Um, we drill the holes in them and we wire them and they're all ready to go. We don't sell them fully assembled. Um, that is a possibility if we can figure out a good way to ship them and, and make them in bulk. Now, has Questions. anyone here used better comb before? Um, not yet, but I'm planning on picking up a, a pack of 10 uh, to test out. Um, David has a, a question about the replacement period. Usually it's recommended that every um, two to three years you, you cycle frames out to um, because of pesticide and, and um, dirt buildup in the hive. So uh, what do you, what's the recommendation for better comb? So we haven't been using them enough seasons yet to know for sure, but our expectation is it will be the same as any other, any other frame. The, okay. the wax will accumulate contaminants just the same as 
as natural wax and the cocoons will build up and the diameter of the cells will decrease over time just the same. So I, I think that'll be the same. The frame could be reused though. You can cut cut out the uh, the comb and make the ones, put new ones in. Excellent. Oh, um, someone asked if you could uh, repeat your first couple of slides from the beginning. Sure. Uh, they missed, missed the beginning. And actually I had the same request because I didn't hit record on the slide uh, to catch your first two or three slides. Okay. So just the, the intro was um, what is better comb? And that is, it is fully synthetic honeycomb. So it's comb made by a machine, not by bees. And it does not contain any beeswax. It's completely synthetic. Um, and here's a little piece of it so you can see it up close. It is a, not a plastic core. It's a, it's a wax core. It's flexible. And it, it rips and bends just about the same as regular comb. It's maybe a little less brittle. It does get more brittle when it's cold. And it's produced in Hungary by a company called Hexacells. And the, uh, the properties of it are very similar to real comb. It's maybe perhaps more uniform because it's made by a machine. And it's put into a frame, as you guys saw me do there. Um, so, David, you said you had been testing it. Have you seen um, the bees chew it out and, and sort of in favor of drone comb uh, in the frames one and ten or two and eight? Um, two and I haven't. And... I haven't seen it positionally like that, but I have seen them chew access holes through the frames. Um, so they can walk through, um, and I've sure. seen I've seen them put drone comb in either where cells deformed or if they've they've added drone comb to the bottom of the frame a few times. Sure. John, maybe you can talk a little bit about the use of better comb with extractors, and also what happens if some of the plastic ends up in the honey. Is it safe for humans? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. If you wire your frames, they can be extracted um, just like you would any other any other frame. So I did that this summer, and I, I wish I had the super to show you, but I forgot to bring it in with me. Um, I put I have three hives at my house, and I put supers on them. Two of them had just regular um, wood frames with plastic foundation, and then one of them had a better comb, ten frames of medium better comb. And they filled that super faster than I've ever seen a super filled. It was really good honey flow. And when I went to check that um, super, it was nearly full. And the other two were, they were maybe a third of the way through drawing it out. So it really, it really demonstrated what the, the advantage of having all that comb ready. So I took it, I uh, uncapped it by hand using a scratching fork and a hot knife. And it uncaps just like a regular regular frame um, and I extracted it in a 20 frame license and it extracted just fine and the, the key to that is having these wires to handle the centrifugal force um, in the extractor uh, so I went a little slow at first because it was my first time doing it but I was able to get up to full speed without any trouble so Phil asked about um, if some of the wax gets into the honey, is that a problem? And the answer is no, because everything in it is a food grade or pharmaceutical grade material. So there's no harm in eating it, eating a little bit of it by mistake or getting it into the honey. Um, it's, it was designed with that in mind. So it, it's not, it's not an issue. Another question I've gotten is, can you make cut comb honey from it? And I suppose you could, but I'm not sure why you'd want to. It's really not natural. Um, the, 
the center core, I think, might be a little thicker than natural, too, or certainly thicker than thin foundations. You would end up with a very chewy product. Um, and I don't think it would sell as well. So I, I wouldn't recommend that. Excellent. In the chat, it says, uh, can you call honey pulled from these frames organic? Um, that's a good question. Um, I don't know if any of the organic folks have, have really looked at that. Um, I don't know. Is anyone here an expert in organic farming? I've got the chat pulled up now, so I'm flipping through it. Sure. Is there better comb queen cells? That was Jim. Not sure what you meant, meant by that. They, uh, at, at, can you potentially start queens as opposed to uh, a Jay-Z BZ cup or uh, some of the, the little classic cups that are sold commercially you could probably you could use the wax or you could um cut a cell out and um you know use a cell punch to start a queen that way okay excellent all right Tony, I, want, I might mention to everybody that I've been using better comb now for two seasons. Um, and my bees have just taken to it very, very naturally. Uh, no, no big deal. It's like they can't really tell much difference. And uh, the first time I tried mounting the better comb on a frame, I actually, I think I heated the wires too much. Uh, but after a couple of times, I got the hang of it and it was really simple just like John demonstrated today so for situations where you want where you need more uh, space for your bees as John pointed out either a swarm or late late late, se late season swarm or you want to just give more room for the for the honey storage it's been working great for us so far I saw somebody ask the question can better comb wax be used for candle making um, and yes, that was, that was one of our questions that we had is what are people going to do with this wax at the end of its life when they end up with, um, old combs that need to be thrown away and you, you cannot sell the wax as beeswax because it, it isn't beeswax. Um, even cappings, if you uncap some of this comb, it'll have some of this better comb wax mixed in with it. So it's important that you don't sell it as beeswax, but that doesn't mean that you can't make candles out of it and you just have candles. They're not, they're not beeswax candles, or maybe they're a blend of beeswax and better comb. And we tested that. We, we made some candles and burned them and they burn virtually identically to beeswax. There's really no discernible difference. Um, and I think that's a good use of it so that you you use up that wax and you're not, you're not letting it get into the, you know, into somebody's tank full of wax that they think is, is beeswax. Um, and if you, if you look on YouTube, uh, Frederick Dunn, he's a, a YouTuber who has quite a few followers. He just did a test where he made candles out of um, better comb wax and, and burned them. And there's a completely better comb one and a completely beeswax one and a 50-50 blend, and they all, they all burn the same. Excellent, excellent. Um, new question. Um, uh, question about, uh, Bill had a question about, he tried using the toothpicks, but the comb still warped. Is there uh, sort of any other tips or tricks that you can help uh, so with, to prevent warping? So our, our answer to that is definitely wiring the frames. Um, the toothpicks, toothpicks alone work in some situations, but we found that most um, will eventually warp if they put nectar in it or if they get exposed to heat. 
And that includes heat up here in New York or down there in Massachusetts. It doesn't, it's not limited down south. So um, wiring the frames is definitely the way to go. Excellent. Good to know. Um, Scott had a question about the reduction workload. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, David just uh, made a comment about having three supers on, one of better comb and um, the other two with just foundation and they were able to fill the better comb uh, super uh, quickly uh, while they were still drawing out the, the supers with foundation. Um, so that that is a uh, definite benefit. Um, I had a question about, I use longer two picks. Excellent. Um, some of the, uh, so David, you work in product development. Are there any sort of new and exciting things from Better Be that we should be aware of for the upcoming season? I just got my catalog in the mail today, but haven't had a chance to uh, look through it. Um, and I, I should correct you. I'm John. Oh, but, um, John. Oh, good heavens. Yeah, that's okay. We do have a David too. Yep, He's yep. our new director of education. Yep. Um, so new products. Um, let's see. What can I share? Um, we do have a new tool that we're planning to launch soon that I think everyone will want one of. Um, Hive tool holder that I think will be quite popular. Um, what else is there? We brought in a new a bunch of new licensed products this year. There's one of them is a smoker box, um, so you can prevent your smoker from lighting your truck on fire, your car on fire. It's a very nice smoker box. Um, we also have a few new honey extractors this year, including two that are meant for oddball frames that people extract or people use, like the AZ frame or the Layens Layens Hive frame. It's basically an extractor that's meant for massive frames. That now, I, I assume that's for a uh, larger dimension, either sort of data double deep or, or um, so those large frames. What about width? One of uh, my issues when I, I went to extract some uh, frames that I had changed the super from um, eight frames in an eight frame box to uh, six or seven and they were extra wide. And when I put them in my extractor, uh, it sheared off the sides because the sort of opening was uh, fairly narrow or, or for normal uh, frame widths. Um, do you have anything that can accommodate those type of frames? Now, was that a, uh, a small extractor, like a four frame? Uh, it was a nine frame. Okay. Nine um, frame accent. Most of our extractors, they, they don't have a, a window that limits how thick the frame can be. Okay. Uh, especially the radial ones, they can be they can be quite thick. The the small tangential four frames, they do. Um, it can be a little bit hard to insert a very fat frame, but anything bigger than that frame, and it, that extractor, um, they'll fit just fine. Excellent, excellent. Um, David Spector had a qu uh, question about the better comb. He said many vendors won't ship comb in cold weather due to fragility. And uh, are you shipping better comb these days or are you holding off deliveries until um, weather gets a little warmer? Yeah, good question. Um, we are shipping it because we've, we've had very few problems with it breaking until just this past weekend, we got one report of a bunch of these medium combs that, that did break in shipping. Um, so we just instructed our shippers to use another layer of bubble wrap. And we might hold off on shipping um, this coming weekend. It'll be down in the negatives. And I think it's, it's when it sits on a trailer overnight and then it gets tossed into another trailer and the package is you know, at zero degrees or so. Um, it is more brittle. But we haven't had a whole lot of trouble Excellent. Wonderful. Um, does anybody else have any other questions? Oh, um, 
any effect on wax moths? Uh, uh, wax moths are, of course, primarily interested in the cocoons uh, first, and then they consume the, the wax as sort of a byproduct. But have yep. you seen any uh, wax moth issues, John? No, so nothing, nothing beyond normal. Um, and there, there was a thought that maybe better comb was resistant to wax moths, and that it does. It's true though. If if there are cocoons, the wax moths will um, get into them just the same as any other combs. But prior to um, the combs being used, there's no, there's no risk of wax moths. Excellent. How are your bees doing? Uh, up in I New just York. checked them this weekend, and I, I lost one already. Unfortunately, they, they had some queen issues in the fall. Um, but the rest of our hives are doing quite well. We uh, were hoping, what we did this year is we, we weighed all of our hives with a scale to make sure they all had enough feed on them. Um, so we're trying to avoid doing winter feeding. And so far, it's, it's worked pretty well. Excellent. Scott Richardson has a, a quote in the chat um, about the compound, uh, no residues and uh, it's clean. Excellent, good, good to know. Thank you, Scott. Okay, if uh, there are no other questions for John um, about, uh, the better comb or about better bee itself. Um, we can wrap this up. One more uh, question. Just oh, Ernie, in. yeah. Um, did you say that bees can't get AFB? No, they can't get AFB from the frame. So if you were to use an old frame of your own or old frame that you bought or were given and it had AFB spores in it, you could um, get your hive infected um, but these virgin combs won't have any AFB spores in them. So the hive itself can still get AFB, but you won't, you won't give them to the hive with the frame like you might with an old, old frame. And then the wax itself uh, for the, the better comb is, is totally devoid of everything as opposed right. to um, beeswax foundation. Yeah. Excellent. Anyone else going once, twice? Okay, well, thank you, John. We greatly appreciate your time. Uh, that was very informative. Um, that was very, very interesting. And it's uh, something worth experimenting with, especially for new beekeepers who have no drawn comb whatsoever. It could yeah. be a, a potentially a, a great resource for them. And especially here in the north, um, like if you're getting a package in, say, April, um, give them a jump start with some, some better comb and you'll have brood more quickly than you might if you're just using the foundation. Um, and if anyone has more questions, if you come up with more questions, just shoot me an email, john, J-O-H-N, at betterbee.com, and I'll uh, do my best to get them answered. Excellent. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, John, for your time. Uh, thank you, oh, thank everyone, you. for coming for this uh, first talk in our series. We continue again next week with um, I want to say Mike Connor. Uh, he's going to be discussing bees and trees and um, pollination and nectar. Uh, so. That promises to be a very interesting uh, lecture as well. The Zoom link is up on the uh, email and it will be in our internal website. As soon as I get it up there, there's a list of dates and interesting talks coming up. But a reminder that if you have not yet renewed, you can do so. Um, there's an, uh, the online form. If you go to middlesexbeekeepers.org uh, slash become a member slash you can um, download a physical form, print it out and mail that to Ed Culkin, or you complete, can complete the form online and uh, hit the submit button and pay your dues uh, via PayPal. 
So uh, we prefer that if you print out the form, um, you enclose a check with it. And if you do the um, renewal online, that you pay online. So um, that's easier for Ed to track and uh, for our treasurer, Alan, to keep, keep things uh, straight. So um, if you have any questions about renewing, you can send me an email and I can uh, help sort out any issues you have. Um, but thank you very much, John, for taking the time to talk to us about a very, very interesting product. Morning. And thank you for everyone uh, coming and attending. Go ahead, Philip. I just wanted to mention to everybody while we're all here, if there's anyone that has a particular topic that they're interested in for one of these hour long check-ins like this, just email Tony or myself. Um, we're really interested in being responsive to uh, the needs of the members. And um, if you like, we get closer to spring, if you wanna learn more about swarms and that sort of thing, we have Alex and we have other people who have uh, experience with swarms and baiting swarm traps and that sort of thing. So if you have any uh, topics that you would like to learn more about, please let us know and, and we'll go to work trying to bring those things to, to everyone's uh, attention and to everyone's benefit. And if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and uh, fill out the member survey. That uh, has a question about speakers and topics, but it also um, will help us guide uh, club efforts this summer and in terms of events, meeting outdoors, uh, what sort of things we want to accomplish. So I have some things in mind that I want to do this year, but um, this is a members, or, uh, we're here for the membership. So uh, if you want something uh, to see happen, um, we will do our best to uh, do that. So I, I'm sure if you have questions or events that you would like to attend, um, there are a lot of other members in the club that would like to do so as well. So um, with on that note, I'm going to thank everyone uh, final time for coming in and attending and uh, bid you good night and hope you, you and your bees stay healthy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank, thank you. Thanks, John. Good night. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, John. Good night and thank you.